If you've followed my channel for any length of time, you probably know by now that people who are into fitness are often going to leverage some pretty extremes to get to a physique that they think is awesome. Some of those extremes can be highly deadly and sometimes cost a life. We've covered many cases in which that actually is the case and there are going to be many more in the future to come, especially with new and novel drugs coming out that are out for research purposes only, but humans are consuming them, even though they're clearly labeled not for human consumption. That would be SARMs and and other peptides that have not even been put into clinical trial for humans yet. One of the common peptides that a lot of bodybuilders or fitness enthusiasts will use is insulin. And to be honest, the mechanics of insulin are actually pretty safe. Here's kind of the hard part, just like almost any drug. You have to use things appropriately if you're wanting to performance enhance, but oftentimes people don't do appropriate things. They do really shitty things. Uh, so much shitty things, to be honest, so much shitty things. It's crazy, actually, what people think of as like normal to them. Insulin is a very leveraged hormone, and you'll see why this is an important discussion for me right now. We're going to talk about another passing. We had a 33-year-old die recently after 15 hours of being unconscious in the shower, according to ABC Net. He suffered a brain injury and had been in an induced coma and was on life support in the hospital for about two weeks after the incident that had happened in Perth, Australia. He wasn't discovered until the police pinged his phone and his family said they didn't know where he was, they were, he was still at the gym and they had to break down the door to get into the gym locker room. He was training for a upcoming bodybuilding competition and the Australian the news outlet noted that the competition would have been his first ever competition when Peroni, Peroni, again if you're, you're new here, I can't say names, verbalizing names for me just almost in pox. It's almost easier to gesticulate names than it is for me to speak them. But he was excited for his potential show. Rest in peace. I'm not trying to make fun of the dude's death. I'm just trying to use it as some education, okay? Now there's some really sad stuff. They saw him on the cameras looking a little bit dizzy, bumping into equipment. And then according to the Sydney Morning Herald, although the cause of death was not released, doctors believe that Peroni's blood sugar levels became extremely low and his blood pressure dropped, potentially triggering a seizure or a state of unconsciousness. Very important quote here. It is not clear what caused his blood sugar levels to plummet. However, the CPR was attempted on scene according to the Australian. All right, this is super important for a lot of people out there. And I know maybe some of you aren't interested in necessarily performance enhancing drugs. Some of you are exorbitantly interested in performance enhancing drugs. Either way, I think it's an important thing to learn about. Bodybuilders use insulin. It is a very anti-catabolic peptide or protein or ligand or hormone, we can just call it. Insulin will stop the breakdown of muscle tissue, and therefore it is extremely favorable to use for bodybuilding, especially because it can leverage huge amounts of muscle mass on people who necessarily wouldn't have that in the first place. A great example is looking at from about 1980 bodybuilders then to like the 1990s to the early 2000s. The only thing that was introduced in the 1990s slash early 2000s in bodybuilding was insulin and a little bit of growth hormone. Suddenly the physiques became exorbitantly bigger, like way, way bigger. Now the problem is, is that when insulin injected or endogenously produced by the beta cells in your pancreas in response to blood glucose, which is the normal process, you know, typically you'd eat some kind of carbohydrate that carbohydrate would give you blood glucose after being digested through your small intestine. And then that blood glucose would signal to, hey, let's provide some more insulin. So your beta cells in your pancreas would produce those insulin proteins. And then they would go to a specific receptor site, encourage the blood glucose to funnel into cells, whether those are adipose sites or cells or muscle cells or myocytes is kind of dependent on the person's body composition and how healthy they are. But generally, that's kind of the process that ensues. Now, bodybuilders hack that system by using exogenous insulin, eating an absorbent amount of food to hypersaturate the muscle stores of glycogen. We've talked about this before on this channel, and I know I'm getting into the weeds. I'm sorry, the carbohydrates will load the muscle up with glycogen. The glucose converts into glycogen when it enters a muscle cell. And then once it's in the glycogenic form, it stays in that muscle cell and actually creates intracellular volume through water retention and other means. Something that's really favorable if bodybuilders want to look bigger and as well, intra-workout, 
they would perform better. Now, it's also something that a lot of young or amateur bodybuilders attempt to use because they think that it is quite fascinating because it does sound really good when you talk about it at face value. What's specifically unique about insulin is that it's not D-ball tablets where you can take a whole handful or an entire bottle in one day and there is no such thing as overdosing. It's not like injectable testosterone where you can inject far too much injectable testosterone and have no exposure to any kind of risk at all, uh, at least in the acute term. It is something where if you take too much of it, you can die. This is not saying that insulin will kill you because there's actually people who've tried to commit suicide using insulin, injecting at least, uh, there was one case where someone injected 300 units of Lantus, which is a long acting insulin, to have themselves go hypoglycemic and then eventually go unconscious and die without having to experience any pain but they failed. And then there was another case that kind of did the same thing. It's never really worked. Our body's really, really productive at keeping us alive and making sure that our body has a balance of blood glucose through protein lysis and a lot of different things. The moral of the story here though is insulin won't directly kill you, but its effects can kill you. For instance, dizziness, nausea, a sort of unconsciousness is can be induced by insulin too, which is really gnarly. For example, fall asleep behind the wheel of a vehicle. Or for example, standing in the shower, really exposed to sharp and hard elements if you were to fall over, go unconscious, knock your head and die. I don't want to insinuate that this was directly caused by insulin. There could be other things too. A lot of bodybuilders, especially first time bodybuilders, want to do everything under the sun to get to their competition goals. And oftentimes they'll find an entry level coach who's willing to do that as well because they want that on their resume. But if I had to assume what was happening is that he was probably dosing either insulin or relatively high doses of metformin. Metformin is another compound that increases the genesis of mitochondria or the size of mitochondria. So you burn energy more efficiently and become greatly more insulin sensitive. It's used in diabetics, women with PCOS, lots of different things, but in a normal person, it can cause a, a ton of hypoglycemia, especially if they're lean or in a healthy composition already. In doing that, it will improve your body's response to a massive amount of nutrition that you put in, as well as it will improve rates of fat loss if you are in a lower glycemic or a near hypoglycemic state. I'm really getting into the weeds, I'm sorry. Basically, what you have to be aware of is he probably influenced himself into a hypoglycemic state where you go nauseous. And by the way, hypo, whenever you hear that, is meaning low or no. And anything with emia at the end of it means in blood. So hyperglycemia means low blood sugar in blood. So you could say that hyperkalemia, hypokalemia, like anything like that, kind of understand what it means. If you hear emia, it means in blood. So it's something in blood serum and hypo means less than, hyper means more than, normo means normal <laughs> of, of whatever that serum thing is. Because he was hypoglycemic induced by some sort of pharmacology, I would assume he likely went unconscious or started to go hypoglycemic, which is really an awful experience. It's where you shake, you get really sweaty, you do get dizzy. Couldn't fix it because he didn't have carbohydrates on hand or he probably improperly dosed one of the two compounds I had mentioned, insulin or metformin, and then unfortunately fell hit himself, got into an unconscious state and remained there for 15 hours before someone came to help him. And by that time, his brain was deoxygenated and brain dead, essentially, even after two weeks in the hospital of uh, life support. So why am I bringing this up? Uh, I seem to do this a lot because I think it's a really unique teaching moment. Even if I'm wrong on this person and they didn't do what I'm suggesting that they probably did, even though I'm almost certain I'm almost kind of always right about these things, there is a huge lesson to be learned. If you're going to be using something as very precarious and volatile as insulin, yes, there's gonna be benefits to be had, but the benefits aren't this exorbitant lore story that someone on a forum told you. It's not this crazy, crazy realization of gains that you're suddenly gonna have, nor is it going to be something that is easy to use in comparison to a tablet of D-Ball or a tablet of Anavar, something that most people who are going down the enhancement route are likely starting with, or SARMs now, unfortunately. Point being, insulin is a lot more 
contextual and time specific and very dose specific. If you use too much insulin in one given setting, you can really screw the pooch and end up unconscious or end up doing something like eating as much as you can to restabilize blood sugar in one setting, which is a crazy experience. Also kind of fun because I like eating. That's, that's you shouldn't do that. Okay. You need to be ensuring that you're getting someone to help you with these kind of things who is well aware of insulin's mechanics and kinetics in the human body and how those things can relate to your nutrition. Yes, it will work. It will build muscle effectively, but it is also highly volatile. And you need to be very aware that the things you are using will cause health impacts no matter what it is, even if it's a natural supplement sooner versus later, even if it's something that's beneficial. I've talked about this before, but natural supplements even cause hepatic dysfunction in some cases because of contaminants, heavy metals, different shit like this. Anyways, we need to understand that basically these things that we're using do have a consequence and you have to consider it as a professional. If you were a doctor, you wouldn't just slam a certain amount of insulin within a patient without understanding any of their history, their dietary intake or anything of that nature. You would check their blood glucose, their fasting insulin level, hopefully their C-peptide. You would see where they're kind of hovering around at normally. Then you would recommend a certain dose based on their symptomatic need and also blood work representation of their need you would titrate the dose up or down as needed to accommodate what they need to do and the same thing is true with bodybuilding in any form of enhancement is the professional aspect of your brain the doctor side of you needs to come out and you need to ask yourself if i was giving this to a patient how would i do it not if i wanted to get the most gains possible how would i do it because that's always the wrong answer and you're always going to fuck yourself up but if you enjoyed this video and you need help with things like this Discord groups down below in the description. Super, super awesome community there. Helps you out with bodybuilding, fitness, and everything involved, including PEDs. And subscribe to me, like, do all the cool things and diddly bops to get me into the algorithm. It really does help, honestly, and it's completely free. So if you enjoyed the video, do that as well. Otherwise, watch one of these videos over here, or I think over here. One of those two. <laughs>